welcome to the Sexy Freedom Media Podcast. A place to discuss pain, passion, and pursuits. Yes, yes. I want to feel alive. Breathe. Make some moves. Protect the throne. This is Sexy Freedom Media Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's Helen Edwards and January Liddell. Aloha with Sexy Freedom Media Podcast, and we're really excited to share our uh, topic for today. It is uh, the topic of being sexy and confident now, like now. (laughs) Right now, even when we're not feeling so sexy and confident, right, Helen? That's Okay, yeah, that's really good. So let's talk about that, actually. When we're sick, do we feel sexy? (laughs) No. (laughs) No, I definitely did not feel sexy and confident when I was sick. I was more concerned about sleeping, <laughs> sleeping and getting my beauty rest. Um, but but you can still feel sexy and confident. I know yesterday when I did my podcast, I was there's no makeup, no makeup. My hair was like in my, you know my mama bun. Um, and I actually still felt sexy, okay. I still felt sexy. <laughs> Despite the fact that I had nothing on and looking all hash, but I I still felt confident and sexy. Why? Because I feel it's a state of mind. It really is. So yes, I was sick. Yes, my physical body was feeling, you know, all these different ailments. But inside my mind, I know that I'm still sexy and I'm still confident despite how I looked on the outside. Does that make sense? Yeah, I want to get a little bit vulnerable here because I know in my late 20s, I wasn't really sexy. I thought I was confident because I had this like, you know, fuck it attitude. I didn't care what anybody thought of me, you know, and I thought that that is what made me feel confident. And at the time, sure, it did boost my confidence a little bit. But in reality, I was really suffering from a poor self-image. Uh, I felt ugly. I was constantly comparing myself. I was very, you know, because of that, I was really jealous in my relationship. And when the relationship fell apart, you know, a, a lot of people are quick to blame the other person. But one of the things I learned is responsibility is power. And I remember thinking I had a lot to do with the fail of that relationship because I was way so jealous way insecure and I'd always you know say oh you're looking at that person over there because they they're they have this and they have that you know because it's it's not what I have and (laughs) and it caused a lot of drama in my relationships going forward not just that one but it wasn't until I became sexy in my own definition of it and started really stepping into my power and empowering myself, that confidence came around. What about you, January? I mean, obviously, you know, when we're kids, right? When we're younger, uh, we're still trying to grow into our skin, right? So just like yourself, I, I wasn't sexy. I wasn't confident, you know, I didn't feel any of those. Um, but I definitely, I definitely um, felt insecure. I definitely felt insecure. And there's still moments, um, even now, you know, that I'm uh, older, um, I still feel insecure about certain things. You know, I think as, as, uh, as a child, we are, well, when we're little, right. When we're like seven and below, we are like, whatever, like sky's the limits and it doesn't really matter, you know? And, and that really, like, I love, and I I know I bring up my daughter a lot, but I love seeing her confident and she just does whatever. Okay. And, um, she has created a YouTube channel. So I'm going to plug her in a little bit. Her YouTube channel is yay, yay, 16, three, two, five or something. It's some crazy thing. And she's created all these videos and she's gotten like 12,000 views on one video and like, you know, 8,000 on another. Anyway, this last one has 1.4 thousand, right? So 1,400 and people are commenting on that. Now, I'm glad we're talking about this right now. Um, 
in those comments, she has some positive comments, like you're really pretty, you're doing a great job, you know, all of that. And it's so good to, to see that kind of comment. Um, but there are comments in there that are saying, cringe, stop, why, why are you doing this? You know, is this real? And I'm, as a mom looking at that, I'm like, she's seven. Like, I can't believe that you're saying this to a seven-year-old. Um, so a lot of being sexy and confident, if you are not grounded in who we are, all of the outside forces can control how we think. So as a parent, both Sam and I understand what's going on and he's very concerned, you know, about the comments that are coming this her way because as you know, if you like I said, if you're not grounded with who you are and you you are not confident in who you are and secure with who you are, then all those outside forces can affect you. And so at this point, because she's so young, um, we are continuously telling her how beautiful she is, how amazing she is, you know, because we're feeding her all these positive things. And if we don't, right, and if we just let those comments just go and she's able to see those comments, she may internalize that, right? There's there's a possibility she could do that. And so, um, like I was saying earlier, as a child, when you're so young, you feel really good, you know, and really amazing about yourself because nothing in the world can affect you, right? You feel like superwoman, you feel like super, superman. But there's some time in the middle of being a child and a teen, something happens during that that point. Um, and a lot of, especially middle school, right? Middle school, that age group can be so cruel and so mean. And I find that it's starting much sooner than middle school. So at this point, right, so as a child for me, I remember eighth grade year being one of the toughest years. And it was one of the toughest years because that's when there were cliques in our school. There were already cliques, but I guess I just didn't pay attention, right? And so now there's all these different cliques. And even though I was a cheerleader, even though I was in the quote unquote popular crowd, right? This is back in the 90s, okay? So I'm like, okay, I'm a cheerleader, I'm cool. No. It wasn't. And uh, I was walking down, you know, the the um, field or whatever you call it, the recess playground. And I remember walking by myself and I remember feeling so sad. I was walking by myself, you know, and um, I'm thankful I had counselors. So I had counselors to talk to, which is so vital because and I'm saying this out to our audience Speaking to a therapist and speaking to a counselor is important. It's important because that helps us find out really who we are. It helps us. The counselor will, will say questions, ask questions that our best friends will not be able to ask because they're trained to ask those pertinent questions that will draw the answers out of you. Anyway, moving forward. Um, eighth grade year, really tough year, you know, I, and then high school came, right? And I was so focused on student government and just so focused on ABC. I was dancing. I was, you know, in theater. I was busy. So at that point, I just wasn't really focused on, um, wasn't focused on what anybody was telling me. I think I was more focused on, I have to get things done. And you know, Helen, both of us are very, you're a Virgo. And I'm like, I gotta, you know, I got this list. And I just, I, and so I was tunnel vision because I had to get things done. Uh, and then of course, college came. Uh, I'm going to tell you though, I was a little pudgy. So I was a little pudgy right? And I wasn't fat by all means. I, I don't consider myself like overweight, not at all. But I had, you know, I had my baby fat, you know? And so I know in high school, I was thinking about like that. And, and because my, my aunts and like other people were saying like, oh, you've gained weight and you know, all of this. And, and so of course that played into my psyche. Okay. That played into my confidence and my, my insecurity when other people were telling me, oh, you've gained weight. Um, and of course I'm like, oh, is that a bad thing? Cause I was, I, when I was younger, I'm like, I'm a hundred pounds, you know? And I was like 10 years old. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a hundred pounds. I thought it was a good thing. But then people were, you know, my aunts were saying like, 
you got to stop eating all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, like, it's so different, like the perspectives, you know, of, of people. And so anyway, uh, as, you know, college year, I think when I, once I got to college, I was more focused on working out and, and all that. And of course my studies. And so because I was walking a lot and I was working out, I just slimmed down. I slimmed down. I was more focused on health and I, I was confident. So I was confident starting in college, um, but it took some time, right? It took years of like trying to find out who I am and all that. And, and even after college, I still struggled. I struggled with insecurity. I struggled with you know, what it meant to be sexy, even in my marital life, there were still times when I'm like, I don't feel sexy, you know, especially when you become a mom. So then you become a mom, like there's all these stages. Yeah. So when you become a mom and you're pregnant and you give birth, you, you have that baby weight that's on you. Right. And I know I didn't feel sexy then, you know, even, even though my husband would tell me, my husband would tell me, you're, you're so beautiful. You know, you're still sexy. And I'm like, like, I feel so frumpy, you know, but anyway, I, I'm so happy that we're talking about this, Helen, because as a woman, we go through different stages from a child up until adult, you know, life. And we will continue going through these stages of what it means to be sexy, what it means to be confident, you know, and for you, Helen, what is it about you? Like what brought you to that point where you felt sexy and you felt confident? Well, first of all, January, I can relate to a lot of your story and what you were saying about your daughter and then, you know, starting at a young age and the ants coming in and saying things to you. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I had ants that were just like that. They were, they were mean, they were harsh. They would, um, they would actually call us names, witch, whore, uh, you know, we were your daughter's age and we would get called these awful names so much that I started thinking it was endearing. Like I'm their favorite niece because they are picking on me. And my mom would always come to my rescue and say, don't, don't talk to my daughter like that. And in a way it, it helped me uh, learn how to take criticism. It helped me learn how to um, but, but it's only because I had my mom there saying, you know what, that's just their perspective. You know what, that's, that's their insecurities coming out on you. You don't have to accept it. And thankfully, I had her telling me how to use the tools of my choice, because that's how I learned to just hear what people have to say, just let it come in one ear and out the other, you know, don't let it touch you. Those are those are that those certain ones, but then there's other ones, you know, what you're talking about, uh, you know, for me, I was bullied a lot, very bullied. I was spit on. I was called ugly. Um, I was pushed around. I was jumped after school. You know, a lot of things happened to me um, because of, because I didn't fit the profile of the popular girl at the time, the beautiful girl. I actually had peach fuzz um, but, but my hair is black. So my peach fuzz came in black. <laughs> so it looked like I had a mustache. So everybody called me monkey mustache, you know, man. And I was just crushed because, uh, you know, from seventh grade and on, I just felt like the most ugliest girl in school. And it really hurt me. And it started my path down being angry towards the world, um, trying to, trying to uh, take my life. Uh, multiple times. Um, thank God I'm still here. <laughs> you know, just, I just think of how cruel, not just kids can be, but everybody, how cruel the world can be. And, you know, at a young age, your parents are doing the best they can to, to help you navigate through those things. Some are tough love, some are no love, and some are an abundance of love, you know. However, coming into my own and realizing that I had a lot to do with the fall, the falling apart of my marriage from my insecurities and also from the notorious cheating I was doing because I was afraid that the person was going to cheat on me first. You know, all of this fear, all of this insecurity, I realized my confidence level is so, so it's just such a mask and that's where it stops. It's, it's just my mask. It's, guarding me 
but my confidence wasn't deeper. It wasn't, it wasn't inside out. It was just out. And it was really just a protection pad. And for me, you know, going back to your question, it really was starting with awareness, you know, that childhood trauma and retraining my brain, rewiring those, those voices in my head that you're not good enough. You're not sexy enough. Your boobs aren't big. Your butt's not big. Your waist isn't thin enough. You know, your skin isn't clear. Your hair is, you know, isn't this way, that way, you know, all this stuff. So really going in and, and when I'd hear those negative voices that were already pre-developed in me as I grew, I had to really start playing the game inside myself. And it's, it, feels like a game to me because it was like, I was, I had the controller and I had to go and I had, it was like an Atari game. I had to shoot down, you know, those little bombs that were coming at me and I had to do, 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 you know, and that's how I looked at it. I had to delete, 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 constantly delete until it became normal where it was deleting on its own, where I can just go through life and be like, yeah, I got this. I got this. (laughs) Hmm. I love that. I love the control because I am a gamer. I, okay. So I used to be a gamer and then became a mom. I was so busy with everything, but I loved gaming. So I understand that like delete, 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 like pew, 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 pew. Totally. And you know what? We're still going to have to do that now, right? We still have to do that now because we may not have those childhood bullies that are talking to us our aunts that are telling us Uh, but I feel sometimes now that we can be our own worst critics and we January you froze oh no two (laughs) Ah, it might be my internet the wind is crazy over here so it just gave me a signal that said your internet's unstable so hopefully no more freezes (laughs) next time I'll just make sure I do (laughs) yeah you'll just and and I'll I'll freeze myself so yeah (laughs) and then we'll just continue okay so um where were we we were talking about oh okay so we may not have those childhood bullies we may not have our aunts you know telling us all these different things to our faces but now I think because we've internalized those things right they're inside of us whether we like it or not those memories are still embedded within our genes within our DNA and so really we become our own bullies to ourselves and that's a tough thing to to fight against because we're fighting against ourselves. So yes, there still may be cyber bullies. There still may be, you know, those ants, you know, out there, but really I feel like the biggest bully of them all is really ourselves because we allow ourselves to say these negative things to ourselves. So when we talk about how to be sexy now, how to be confident now. So one of the first things, right, of being um, confident and being sexy is is really, um, like you said, you know, we're going to fight, we're going to pew, pew, pew with our controller because guess what? We have the control to either grasp whatever that is coming our way or like, pew, pew, you know, flick it out. I don't know if you've seen that meme, but there's a meme where it's like negativity by, you know, anger by, resentment by, you know, bitterness by, and you can, you can swat it really all you want, or you get your video control, go right. And just be like, and, and that to me is a a sign of being sexy. Okay. So sexy doesn't necessarily, let's talk about our top 10. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go into the top 10. So we're going to segue into this whole sexy and confidence, uh, what we believe our tips are, our advice are, our suggestions for feeling sexy and confident. Awesome. Yeah. So my number one is, well, my number one was confidence because being sexy is being confident in oneself. So when you're confident in your own skin, meaning that you're okay with how you look. Okay, so you're, you're okay with, look, I have my eyes, I got my nose, I got my, I I have all of my parts, and they're working perfectly fine. And even if, 
I have a friend, PJ, who is actually one of our guests. He is a sexy being. And the reason why he's a sexy being is because he is confident in himself. He actually is a, a quadriplegic, so he doesn't have any limbs, right? Oh, he, I'm sorry. He has, so, oh, he has limbs, but they're quadriplegic, right? So, but his mind is sexy. His, his, the way that he projects himself is sexy and confident. Why? Because he is comfortable in his own skin. So that, that to me is my number one. Ooh, that's, I, I know PJ, I saw his, well, I think it was, was it all three of us or just you and him? I can't remember. Anyways, everybody look <laughs> it up. <laughs> it's one of our best podcasts though. It's a uh, resiliency he talks about resiliency. It's, it's fascinating. Um, all right. So here's a uh, number two, emotional mastery. And this was really important to me because I realized if I allow my emotions to get the best of me and I act in emotion, then I'm allowing my emotions to be out of control. And if I'm out of control, then who's really holding the control? Other voices in my head, hormones, whatever, you know, so confident to me is standing strong in yourself. And no matter how you feel, you're going to try to do your best to make the right decision for yourself. And here's an example of that is you know, like I said, I had a really bad problem with jealousy in the past, and I know that's carried on in my relationships. So one of the things I had to learn how to do was if I saw a beautiful woman on the screen and I looked over at my man and he's, you know, goo goo goggy and her, or that's what's in my mind. I tell myself, like, I used to just blurt out, oh, you, are you looking at that girl? Oh, you think she's pretty, you know? <laughs> so I started telling myself, like, <laughs> for all I know, he's probably thinking about how, you know, when's the next bill due for gas or lighting or whatever, you know? <laughs> so I just start telling myself, God didn't make, God didn't create anything ugly, you know? So who, why am I putting another woman down? Why am I putting another creation down? All I'm doing is showing my weakness and I'm revealing my insecurities. And that's, not beautiful to me. That's, that feels ugly to me. And sure, I may feel that inside, but at least inside I can take note and work on myself. So that's emotional mastery is not jumping to conclusions, not, you know, going off on somebody, not being a catty, a catty woman to other women. And even inside the industry, you know, I, I really can't stand when I say, when I see haters on, on the same industry, you know, people, coaches putting down coaches, uh, authors putting down authors, financial builders putting down financial builders, you know, uh, just, it really looks ugly. And for me, I do the, my best not to even allow my energy to go and have a say in it. My energy is too precious and my energy is part of my emotions and that those emotions I master. I don't want anybody else in control of them. Am I perfect? No, but <laughs> I do my damnedest to have emotional mastery. And I believe that is a profound way to have confidence. Mm, okay, wait, hold on. Where's my mic? Boop. Yes, girl. Yes, emotionally mastery. Let me tell you, I love that because I was reading something that um, Nina brought home last night and she was showing me this thing and it's about controlling your emotions so it's so funny that you bring that up because in that image right so they're trying to teach these young children how to control and to ha have emotional mastery it shows a picture of a little boy with a leash holding a dog it shows a person driving a car or a truck it shows a person holding a kite right and it show and so the object of that worksheet was circle who is in control and who is being controlled right um so of course it's like the boy is controlling the dog right the driver is controlling the truck and the girl is controlling the kite it's a very clear image of that about how we can control our emotions we have the ability to do that because we are we are our own selves, right? It's not, you know how um, you'll hear people say, you made me mad, right? You made me mad. But really, if we step back, 
we can actually control that emotion. We can actually, we can actually step back and assess what emotion do I want to portray? Right. So I love that emotional mastery. Absolutely. You're, you're absolutely right. And that, that entails with, you know, how to be confident and how to be sexy. All right. So my number two of how to be sexy and confident now is simply smiling. Smile. So you smile and smiling just, do you know that it's actually less muscle to smile than to frown? I thought that was fascinating. So just smiling will give you that extra boost of confidence and sexiness. What's your number three? I love that one. <laughs> I smile all the time. Sometimes I look at all my pictures. I'm like, oh my God, you're smiling in all of them. Like, where's your sexy, like, you know? <laughs> all right. Uh, my, so let's see. So one, two, <laughs> that was three. Okay. So four, uh, I wrote down humor because I believe like humor and laughter is so sexy, especially when you're in a relationship with somebody who can make you laugh so much and not just like in the good times, but during some really rough times too, they find ways to find, you know, the, the humor in it. I, I find that incredibly sexy and I've adopted that. And I start making jokes sometimes, especially when it's like a really rough, you know, season, <laughs> I'll make jokes and I'll try to make light of it. And to me that it boosts my confidence because then I, it kind of snaps me out of the darkness that I feel or originally started with. So yeah, humor. Humor. So my husband yesterday, um, we were waiting to meet with our son's teacher. And so he, he showed me a meme and he's like, I saw this meme and I thought of you and the, the not the meme, a video. He's like, I saw this video and I thought of you. And so you, you see this lady on a beach okay she's in her bikini she's like sun tanning right and then a guy comes by and he says I'm gonna give you a ticket and the lady's like what a ticket for what and the guy says a ticket for being so sexy <laughs> so yes humor humor you know and that does that definitely does give an extra boost of confidence and an extra feeling of sexiness you know because it's good to laugh at yourself it's good to laugh period so Absolutely. My number five, are we number five now? <laughs> number five. Okay. So my number five of being sexy, hold on, I'm, is being vulnerable. So for me, being vulnerable, being transparent, uh, that to me is sexy. That to me is confidence. Because guess what? Despite the fact that you may have made a mistake, um, I have made, made a mistake. Despite the fact that I may look and you saw yesterday on my on the podcast, I was, mm, you know, but still I was being transparent as being vulnerable uh, and being honest and authentic. I think, you know, um, about oneself is sexy because you are being free, right? The reason why this was so important for us to discuss is because, hello, Sexy Freedom Media podcast this is vital for us to talk about because this is what we are. This is this is who we are, Sexy Freedom Media Podcast. So being vulnerable allows you to be free. And to me, that's sexy and that's confident. What's your number six? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, body language, it kind of goes perfectly with that. Body language is really important because, you know, when you're slunched over, and you're looking down all the time, your body language kind of shows that you're shut down. There's actually a study that people with who cross their arms, they're not, they're guarded. And I remember I used to cross my arms all the time. So I started just, you know, letting my arms stay open and it goes along with being aligned with abundance and prosperity. You know, I, I'm always trying to make sure that I have my shoulders back or, you know, my, my, um, my arms not cross or uncrossed, you know, I want to stay open. And you, I did practice some years ago when I started doing confidence building for myself. I remember one of the things I challenged myself on was looking, keeping my chin up no matter where I walked. Cause I would, sometimes I'd walk and I just watch my feet the whole time. And I realized if I just keep my chin up and force myself to look straight. And sometimes I'd, you know, people walking my way and I was walking their way and I kind of 
you know, look the other way. I didn't want to make eye contact. And I realized, why don't I want to make eye contact? Like, what am I so afraid of? You know, look at them and smile, eh, you know? <laughs> and another thing with body language is in the gym. I was afraid to go to the gym, believe it or not. I love the gym, but I'd, I'd sit out of my car and have to force myself to walk into the gym. I, I, I was thinking that I didn't want people to look at me. I didn't want to be judged. I didn't want to get next to somebody who had the full on muscles and six pack and, you know, the girl with the little skimpy top and the, the tight pants. And, you know, I always went in with a huge giant sweater or shirt and I just felt like there I was comparing myself. And I'd literally sit in the car for like 30 minutes trying to talk myself to go into the gym. Okay. And I realized, what am I doing? So I, what I did is I'd go into the gym and as I'm sitting there, I'd make sure I looked at every person and said, I am you, I am you, I am you. So that way that helped me tell myself, we're no different. They're just in a different body suit. They probably have the same insecurities. They got the same, you know, bills to pay in life. They probably got families. They probably go through their own drama and traumas. So we're basically kind of the same and on the same human journey. And that really helped me. And, you know, the eye contact, the smiles, like you're saying, body language, rolling your shoulders up and down, uh, keeping your chin up and learning to take care of myself physically, all body language, how you, you know, interact with somebody, how you move your shoulders and going into like that confidence and then segueing into sexy curves, you know? Um, yes. Like if I lean in, lean and open, lean and open, you know, <laughs> if I walk in the room, I walk in with my right leg first and then my body rolls on <laughs> along with it, you know, <laughs> body language is so powerful. So yes. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I love that you have worked you're like, you have worked on yourself, Helen. I am amazed at the stories that you're saying and you're sharing here today, because, uh, you know, I, we've known each other for what, over a year now and, and, and we've talked quite some time, but your stories are, wow. I am floored at the level of, um, work that you've put yourself through because it just sounds like you, you know, like from, a little bud right now you've blossomed into this beautiful sexy being right <laughs> um I, yeah body language for sure and I I think uh and that's what people see more right is your body language outside of your facade people see your body language what is that there's a percentage of verbal versus non-verbal and I believe the non-verbal is like way up there it's you know it's unbelievable how much body language can speak so much. So, and I love that you practice that. I think for me, I like to mimic those that are confident. Okay. Because there, are, there were times that I was not, okay. That's, I mean, hello, we all start from somewhere. So I was not confident. So I look at those that are confident and that are, that are influential in my life and what, how do they portray themselves? And so I mimic that same energy and that same, you know, when we talk about body language, like I think about Beyonce, right? I look at Beyonce, I look at Mariah Carey and I'm like, okay, I like her. I like that, you know, and that Britney Spears, right? And it's really, for me, it's like, wow, they are free. And that is the utmost feeling of being sexy and confident is that freedom and the, your body language, like you said, like this, you know, when you, when you cross your arms, it really, it doesn't show that you're open, right? It doesn't show that you're, it shows that you're guarded, right? You're guarded. But when you just let go and you're, ah, you know, and then, and then you walk that walk. I mean, I imagine myself as a model. I'm not six foot, but if I was six foot, you know, I pretend I'm six foot tall. And I'm walking wherever I'm walking. I'm just, I walk as if I am six foot tall. All right. So I'm really short. I'm like five feet. Okay. So I'm walking like I'm tall and I have my head up, held up high. My boobies are out, you know, because something about putting your boobs out, it's just, it makes you feel good. Okay. I don't know how to explain that, but it does like, all right, I, I'm good. I'm good. And, um, Okay, I have a story to tell. 
So there was a story uh, when I, last week, I did my tribute for Tom and it was at a beach, beautiful beach. And it was a beautiful moment, um, but there were a lot of homeless and it was just, by, I was just by myself. So I'm like, you know, and, and I, I'm going to say I was a little bit worried. I was a little bit worried. So what did I do? Shoot, I don't have keys here, but I'll, I'll use, I'll use these batteries. All right. So I have I got my keys. Okay. So this is body language, right? And body language, confident. Cause you gotta, you gotta be confident. You gotta show that you're good. You know, if in the height of like, if you're in an alley, okay, ladies, if you're an alley one, I really hope you don't walk through an alley, but if you have to walk through an alley, you gotta, you know, show that you're confident. All right. Yeah. Puff your chest up, you know, I'm like, okay, I got this right. And then Hopefully you have keys. Now, if you got keys, this is one thing I learned in my self-defense class. You put your keys, okay? Like the key part is sticking out like this, all right? And you just, you walk like this and you look confident and you have this. Thing. Uh, that made me feel confident, Helen. Okay, I know these are batteries, but imagine them as keys, all right? So this is how I walk if I'm walking by myself. I am ready. <laughs> so anyway, body language. I'm um, moving on. <laughs> Number yeah, seven. I was going to say you skipped one. You skipped uh, being comfortable in one's own skin. Yes, yes, that was what I was going to get to. So number seven, being comfortable in one's own skin. And I touched a little bit about that, but that number seven, being comfortable in one's own skin means that you are, for me, what that means is I am grateful for the body that I have. All right. It may not be a model body. It may not be like the body that I envision it to be, but guess what? It's a body and I'm okay with this body. All right. So be okay with the body that you're in. This is merely just a um, facade, right? This is merely just a shell. Your soul, your soul inside, that's what we need to be working on, right? Is our soul and what our soul is going through and what our soul is feeling and what our soul wants to portray because that soul wants to come out. And you can't, our soul can't come out if we are, if we are constantly talking about that like negative self-talk to ourselves, okay? When we talk negatively to ourselves, when we internalize what other people are saying and you're hearing all these things, you're seeing all these negative cyber bully things that are coming in through comments on Facebook, on YouTube, on TikTok, whatever, and you're seeing all these things, that's the time when you get your controller and you'll be like, pew, 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 right? And when I mean comfortable in your own skin, that means take a step back, take a step back and see what you have and being grateful for what you have, because being comfortable in one's own skin is being thankful that, hey, I got some working fingers. I got some working, you know, um, feet. My eyes can see, my ears can hear, my mouth can talk. I can smell, I can taste, I can do all these things. And that is what gives us confidence that is being comfortable in your own skin being okay being okay with who we are because at the end of the day our soul and what we project and what we give to others and what we share to others is what's important that is what is fulfilling our purpose right as being comfortable in our own skin and allowing that our soul to just disperse, disperse and share and, and live one's purpose. Because if you're not comfortable in your skin and you're focused on, on the negative, how can you live your purpose? You are, you're not going to be able to live your purpose because you're not comfortable in your skin. You got to be comfortable in your skin. Yeah, I love that, January. One of the things you said earlier was all the work that I've done on myself. And I, I've been on this journey for almost two decades and the reason I started working on confidence specifically was because of how destructive I was in my relationships with myself and with former partners. And I realized it's not them. Mostly it's me. I'm jumping in these relationships. We all got our problems, but I'm so self-destructive and I want to change that. I so desperately want to be somebody else that I realized that somebody else is already me. I just got to find her. I got to dig her out. I got to rescue her. And you're talking about being in your own skin. One of the 
things I used to do also is I would purposely watch videos of, you know, somebody who, you know, was quadriplegic, I can't even say that word, quadriplegic, uh, somebody who um, was born with a cleft lip. Uh, I'd watch all the, these inspirational stories, things that would move me and bring me to tears. And I was inspired by them. If they could find love and confidence in themselves, why not me? With full intact, you know, what, what am I doing to myself? Yeah, and I wanted their confidence. And, you know, one of the things I learned from so many inspirational stories was that they accepted who they were, who they are, right where they're at. And I realized I wasn't, I wasn't accepting myself. And I, that set me on this journey of how do I accept myself? How do I love myself right where I'm at? So one of the, the practices I did was I'd be in the shower, no images here. <laughs> I'd go, be in the shower and I'd start talking to my skin. Like, you know, they say that there's, um, there's science behind talking to plants. And if you talk to the plant, the plant will grow and shine for you. And I thought that's probably the same for our cells and our body and our skin, the skin being one of the largest organs in the body. Like I need to start talking to my skin. So I started making a practice of talking to my skin and telling like my legs, oh my God, you're so beautiful today. Oh my, is that hair on your skin? Whoa, you have a hairy leg today. Oh, you are so hot. You know, like I would, I would find myself laughing, going back to humor, laughing at myself or talking to myself and making jokes about, you know, oh my God, look at your stretch marks. Those are battle wounds because we went in, do, 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 do. We fought hard and had a little pump, baby, you know? And I, I just realized self-talk is so helpful on accepting your body. And then also going back to like the gaming idea. I, I really believe my mantra was life is a game and I wanted to win. So yeah, <laughs> so that is a practice I did. Um, today, I'm going to defeat me. I'm going to uh, defeat me and uh, defeat my negativity, defeat my insecurities. And I'm going to love my skin and pretend that this is just a, this is a, a bodysuit that I was given. And going back to something I talk about a lot is protecting the throne. Yes, queen. Yes, king. Protecting the mind, body, and spirit. Well, the body, being comfortable in your own skin, is, you know, you don't, if you look at the generations of these magnificent thrones and kingdoms, they're not attacking within, they're trying to attack outwardly and protect what's within. And that's the same for our bodies, right? So learn to love it, accept it right where you're at. So I love that one. Yeah, I, I do want to stick on this one just for a little bit, because you know, being comfortable in your own skin, right, is, uh, I, I love that you said acceptance. Um, acceptance is one of the key things about being positive and staying positive is accepting where you're at, uh, because it's true. So, you know, last year, last year, I lost, you know, 25 pounds, right? Lost 25 pounds, felt amazing, felt so confident. Okay, but I gained some weight this year. Okay, so I gained some weight but then I had to stop and think like, yeah, I gained weight, but I'm still the same person. I'm still the same person. Whether I'm 20 pounds heavier or 20 pounds lighter, I'm still that same person. And yeah, for all, yeah, you know, for all our listeners out there, um, your weight doesn't define who you are. Okay, so I, I do want to say that out really loud. Your weight does not define who you are. It does, however, may impact health. So I do want to say that. So health may, um, weight may impact health. But if you are, a, you know, because there are big boned, you know, men and women, and that's just the way that their physique is made, you know? And so um, accepting that, truly accepting it. And, and when I say being grateful for it too, uh, because like you said earlier, Helen, God does not make ugly, you know, God does not, make any mistakes and whatever skin that you're in is a reason why there's you're in the skin that you're in and I'm going to go back to PJ 
you know, PJ was born this way. He was born in this way. And PJ, I, I just shout out because you are just so inspirational. <laughs> I I love, I love your wisdom. And so anyway, PJ could have chosen to be on that angry path. Like there's so many choices that he could have gone, you know, gone through. And I'm sure he may have gone through several ones, but he fought through that, right? And despite the fact that he's unable to walk, he's unable to touch, this man has lived a life that no other, none other, I have not lived that life. He's gone skydiving, parachuting. Um, what else did he do? And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he did that. He went down the Grand Canyon and almost like fell, but he like laughed about it. He's amazing. What I love about his journey is that he made the choice to accept where he's at. And just like we were talking about earlier, you were talking about earlier is accepting where you're at. And it, it takes time, you know, every day is a battle. But if we're trying our best every single day, that's compounded. It's com compounded interest. Okay. So compounded interest growing with those little baby steps that you're doing. So keep on working towards that goal of being comfortable in your skin because it does take work. Helen and yeah. I did get to this point without work. Well, you were saying before in touching base on the whole idea of, you know, uh, people who want to change their appearance and their body. That's, that's not what we're talking about, but I will address that. There is empowerment when you do want to change that. And that is loving yourself right where you're at. And then saying, I think I'm going to make adjustments to this part of my life, to this part of my body, to this part of this, this part of that. So that's definitely not for a whole different uh, show. But I do want to say, like, if you are somebody that's kind of hating on your body right now, you know, try to try your best to just start practicing self-love and self-acceptance. And then once you're in that place, being able to change it is going to come so much more impactful to you. So uh, <laughs> which one are we on now? I forgot. Mine. Okay. <laughs> okay. So actually we're on eight. Yeah, we're on eight. Okay. So my eight was uh, the power of voice, which goes hand in hand with everything we've been talking about. The power of voice. This is huge because there's so many of us who have confidence in appearance, but not confidence in our voice. And what I mean by that is speaking up from the heart and filling that inside your gut and then using your voice to speak about it. And that voice can also come in sign language, through emails, through written word, just using your voice to, to be confident within yourself. Um, for example, I remember when um, I would just let people step on me all the time and I was scared to hurt their feelings by standing up for myself or I was scared to uh, go against the grain or what if they don't like me or what if they get, you know, what if they get defensive by something I say? And so I'd hide my voice all the time, especially in relationships. You know, if, if somebody hurt me, I felt like if I didn't speak up, if I spoke up, it was going to cause an argument. Uh, I was afraid. And that was just eating me up and eating up all the confidence and security that I had within myself. I had to learn how to use my voice by empowering my voice. And with that came learning again. I practice what I preach, okay? I've done the work. And one of the things I did was I learned how to communicate effectively. And when I learned how to communi communicate effectively, okay, I, I'm stuttering. It's okay. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about using different verbiage when you're talking to somebody, laying down the foundation, acknowledging people, showing appreciation, saying, I need to speak with you. Let me speak first. And then you speak and then I speak and then we'll go back and forth. You know, controlling the the communication vibe was really important to me. So that way, not just I could be heard, but whoever I was speaking to could also be heard. So power and voice. Yes, you're so 
earlier in a different podcast, we talked about how our tongue can be a sword. We're like sword, sword. Okay. So can be a sword. So yes, the, our voices are powerful. And I'm going to tell you this, Helen, I uh, did not want to do a podcast or any vlog or whatever. The reason I started doing podcasts and vlogs was because I was in network marketing. So I was in network marketing. And that was one of the things they said was go live and do something live. And because of that, because of that, I felt more confident using my voice and sharing what I've learned and the knowledge that I've gained over the years. But I did not want to do this. <laughs> and I didn't feel I had anything to say. So because I didn't feel any like I had anything to say, I kept quiet. I kept quiet and I didn't, I just went about, in fact, I actually didn't like social media. In the beginning, my friend Monica, hi, Monica from the Philippines, and she was saying, had me on Facebook. I'm like, I'm not doing Facebook. <laughs> I'm like, nope, I don't want to do Facebook. And she kept asking and asking. I'm like, I don't want to do social media. No. So I finally conceded. I finally accepted. I said, okay, I'll go on social media. And it was really during the height of me being um, in network marketing that I felt social media can be used as a tool. Okay, so that progressed my journey into sharing my voice, but I was sharing my voice through words or I was sharing my voice through memes. And then it progressed into a podcast. And, and now what it's helping me in terms of gaining my voice is it is helping me gain that confidence. And it is helping me become a better communicator because as in all things we are human so we have to communicate it entails being in relationship with other people right so when you talk about allowing your voice to be heard but also hearing the other person's voice that is vital in communication and voice power right because we are now giving the relationship a more whole type of environment instead of just a one-sided environment where it's, I'm just listening and I'm just gaining whatever. Now it's, I'm listening and I'm sharing, you know, and it's this symbiotic relationship. That voice power is also important in business. Now, when you're in business and you're talking to your clients, you're talking to your, you know, um, your patients or whatever, you do need to have that type of voice power that shows some type of credibility, right? So credibility is vital, right, in, in voice power. And when you're able to be in your voice and you're able to be, to be comfortable in your voice, that's when you feel like, all right, I got that. I, I got it, you know? And then you're able to say, I am confident in my skin. I'm I'm I feel sexy. I feel confident because my voice is being heard one but my voice is being um projected as well. Girl, okay, look. <laughs> yes. Yes to all that. Uh so 5 and a half years ago when I started this podcast, I would have to re-listen to the podcast after the recording was done so that way I can do any editing. I hated the sound of my voice. I would cringe. I was just like, ah, oh my God, can I fast forward? But I forced myself to listen over and over and over again. And when you were talking about that just now, I, I had this flashback of, oh my God, I was so mean to myself. Wow. Because now I can't really say like, I love my voice. I feel like I'd be in, you know, not authentic saying that because I'm still working on loving my voice, but I will say that I've become more acceptant of listening to myself, not even judging, not criticizing, unless I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that, but, <laughs> but I laugh it off, but I gotta say I've grown so much from this podcast. And like you were talking about, it has definitely helped me and I'm pretty sure you empower our voices, right? Yeah, totally. It's allowed me to give myself positive feedback. Okay, so there's positive um, 
criticism, right? But, and you know, that sounds like such a di- dichotomy, positive, positive criticism. I get what you're saying. But yeah, okay. So it's, but it's good for us. It's good for us to hear this, you know, because then I can, I can reevaluate myself. There's a saying, you know, when you know who you are, um, right? When you know who you are, then anything, anything is possible because you're, you're, you're assessing who you are. And, and that's, that's the first step, right? In, in moving towards a, a, your goal is, is knowing who you are. Um, so number 10, if, are we at number 10? We're at nine. Yeah, we're nine. <laughs> That's okay. We're at nine. Hold on. Oh, I'm going to wait a second. So I think <laughs> usually we have it together, but this is the first time we, we didn't flow with our list. We actually wrote them down and we're all over the place. <laughs> it's crazy, right? It, it's kind of funny. We Very so ironic. Much okay. We're on nine with accessorize and then I have 10. Okay. All right. Accessorize. All right. So accessorize. Accessorize. What I mean by accessorize is that there is something about wearing an outfit or wearing like earrings or things like that, you know, for us women. For you men, I'm sure there are certain things that you put on, you're like, oh yeah, I feel sexy, right? But for us women, because I can't talk, I'm not a man. So for us women, when you are in the dress that you said yes to, you're like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm." You know, and you feel like Barbie, you feel like whatever, you feel like you're on top of the world when you're wearing the right, the right outfit that you feel is right for yourself, right? And for me, I I love earrings. Like if I'm not wearing earrings, I feel like I'm naked. Okay. So I feel like I'm like, oh, I'm missing something. Um, so for me, like accessorizing and and wearing certain clothes that make you feel amazing, that make you feel like you are in your power. Okay. So you're, there are certain clothes that you're like, "Mm, yes, this is it. You know, when I'm in my pajamas, girl, when I'm in my pajamas, I'm like lounging around, I'm Netflixing and chilling. But when I'm in like that power clothes, you know, those, you know what I'm talking about, right? Those power clothes. I'm like, oh, you get a certain like different feeling, a different vibe when you are accessorizing, when you are, you know, in the, in the certain dress type. Do you feel me? Yes. I actually have two sisters who accessorize a lot. And sometimes all they do is put on some bling bling necklaces and oh my gosh, they're popping. They're glowing just from the necklace. I got to give a shout out to my sister Mitzi though. She's the accessorizer. She goes to work. Like I will go to work in a sweater and some jeans every single day. And she will she will actually get up and she will take the hour to do her hair, do her makeup, put on the beautiful like floral shirt. And I'm just like, wow, you know, (laughs) I'm just like, you're so beautiful. And, um, and she's a big girl and she loves it. She owns it. She's like, oh, I got that swag, you know? And I'm like, gosh, you're so confident. I love it. And she'll be like, here, you can have some. And I put it on. I'm like, ooh, it's not me. Because I got a different style of accessorizing. But to me, I'm just fascinated because I love, I love that that glow just by putting on accessorizing um, with jewelry. Uh, I also love, love lipstick. Lipstick and uh, shout out to my sister, M- Melissa. She sells uh, Pure Romance. And she's also a bigger girl. And I'm telling you, she's confident. She's so sexy and she's not afraid to talk to anybody. And she, she, um, when she was here for my birthday party slash, uh, surprise engagement, she brought gifts for all the women who came out for girls night. And they were these little like penises, but they were, um, they were lipstick penises. And (laughs) I'm not kidding. I have lipstick right? I got my lipstick and then I've got my penis lipstick and I run to put my penis lipstick on all the time. For some reason, it just makes me feel so sexy. (laughs) Like I need more colors, Melissa. Like this is hot. All right. So penis lipstick. Yes. Yes. I'll have to get you one. They're awesome. Uh, if you got, I'll put Melissa's information. If anybody's interested, you got to get them. Uh, they're great for gifts and everything, but okay. So also for me, and I wrote it in my book, Nothing Sexier Than Freedom. Uh, I also talk about wearing black boots, the the um, black boots that come up to your knee 
Oh my gosh. They make me, I have a pair. I put them on anytime I feel like I just need an extra boost of sexiness. Even if I just put them on and wash the dishes, they definitely make me feel sexy with, along with heels and lingerie. I love lingerie. I really should put it on more. Okay. I will. Um, <laughs> but I love just wearing lingerie for myself and it just anytime going to sleep, it just, accessorizing I love that yes yes ladies yes let's do more of it <laughs> oh I would love to wear my boots like right now but it is probably like 80 degrees here so I probably cannot wear my boots right now but those definitely, definitely 80 degrees is perfect are you serious it's like 32 <laughs> degrees here <laughs> I know but it's snow it's Christmas weather it's beautiful but yes yeah, definitely my my boots but my red converses also make me feel sexy. All right. So I'd be rocking my red converses and I'm like, mm. uh, so yes, the, the shoes. I'm going to second that I have converse. I have my black converse. Con I don't know about everybody else, but converse are sexy. Oh, well, yes. yes. <laughs> I need more in my life. I got yellow, black and red, but, and my husband has these like really like bandana ish, like different color is really nice so but yes converses are sexy I don't know what it is about converses but I'm like mm. all right for everybody who's watching right now if you own a pair of converse we'd love to know the color that you own drop it yep. in the comments <laughs> I want to see I want to see your shoes so drop it off <laughs> um but yes converses man we can go on and on about like what accessories that make you feel sexy you can be whatever skin you're in and as long as you accessorize girl mm. You're like, I mean, I know I do. Red, I have these red heels, red heels that I'm wearing tonight with my ugly sweater. And I will be, I'll be ugly fabulous. That's a new word. I'm ugly fabulous. Ugly fabulous. I love it. Oh my God. Okay. So let's go into number 10. Uh, yeah. Last one is going to be stepping outside your comfort zone, which kind of wraps up all of this, right? <laughs> Yeah, change your sign languaging to me right now. <laughs> okay, so yeah, circle it around, circle it yes. around. Yes, stepping into or <laughs> stepping outside of your comfort zone. Okay, this is going. This is basically encompassing everything we talked about because in order for you to gain confidence and step into your sexy, successful, and soul fed, soul fed self is by getting out of your comfort zone and challenging yourself. Uh, like I said, in one of my podcasts, my um, past podcast was um, getting through my 30 day challenge. I had to really challenge myself to step out of my comfort zone in so many different ways. And that allowed me to become more confident. And I'm grateful for stepping out of my comfort zone. I'm grateful for the opportunity it, it really is opportunity knocking. It's the, the, the weird feeling, the uncomfortable feeling of using your voice because it's going to stretch you. It's going to stretch you to where you want to go. Let me tell you like this. We all want and desire abundance, wealth, and health, and great, fabulous, sexy relationships, right? With ourselves, especially. But in order to get that, we're going to have to step outside of our bubble. We're going to have to try new things. We're going to have to see what works for us, what doesn't. So that way we can get the bullshit out of the way and walk through to achieve what we want, to, to attract what we want. What do you think, January? You know, it's funny that you bring that up because we were talking about our voice power, right? And how our voice power can exude confidence, can exude that sexiness. And for me, I, I really did not want to, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. Um, so I was definitely going outside of my um, comfort zone. Can I do this? Yes, of course I could do this, but did I want to do this? I did not want to do this. Okay. So I, I, I didn't want to do it because I felt vulnerable. I felt like I was putting myself out there and when we put ourselves out there, we're allowing other people to criticize us, right? We're allowing others to like, we're going to be in this like crystal ball. And now like people are like, you know, in a microscope and we're under a microscope. So I am allowing that and I'm allowing that. 
but not because like I want that to happen and I want that to you know, to, to affect me, but I'm allowing it to happen because guess what? I have a voice. I have something to share. I like to share with you. And I'd like for, you know, honestly, like when I think of sexy freedom media podcast, what that means to me is that we're able to talk about anything and everything that deals with life, with love, with wealth, with abundance, you know, and it deals with all of that. But in order to do that, I have to open my mouth. <laughs> I have to get out of that comfort zone and and not be shy and not not feel not be afraid that well people are going to criticize me. Oh, well, you know what? People are going to criticize me and that's okay, you know. I, I don't care. But at this moment when I think about stepping outside of the comfort zone, there's a there's another phrase and I can't remember the phrase. I I hear and read so much, but the phrase goes something like this. When you step outside of the comfort zone, there's something magical that happens outside of that. But you have to take that leap of faith so that you can experience this amazing magical moment. But you can't you can't do it unless you take that first step. Oh okay. yeah. Right, but something like that. Yeah, I I definitely believe it. And one of the things I heard, so I'm on the path right now of abundance and prosperity. And I learned something new about resistance, you know, not just what you resist persists, but really when I'm resisting, I'm standing in the way of the, that flow, that connection to me and abundance and prosperity. So that, that resistance, I'm, I'm basically blocking my own, uh, acquiring of the abundance and prosperity I want in my life. So I've got to step out of my comfort zone. I've got to stop resisting. So that way I can just have this beautiful flow of abundance and prosperity in my life. And it's the same with confidence and sexy of how I want to feel. And I, I'm going to kind of um, side blind us right here, but seduction and lust and, you know, talking dirty, you know, <laughs> those were things that were really hard for me at one time. And taking pictures of myself, I was really like, you know, going back to the insecurities. I I can't even believe how much video and photos I put out there online of myself. And a lot of people like, oh my gosh, you're just so good at it. I wasn't just so good at it. I worked up to getting good at it because again, I didn't like my voice and I didn't like seeing pictures of myself. I was so critical. So stepping out of my comfort zone was learning how to do graphics and take pictures of myself and get cute and try to get those pictures of those like, you know, I am a model. I'm, I am a model. You are a model, January. You're a model to your kids. You're a model to people around you. I'm a model to those around me. I'm a model to myself. I am the main model who walks down the hallway, the runway to the kitchen. Okay, let's go models. We are the new faces of the models of today. <laughs> so yes, step in your sexy and confident self, queen, king, let's go. <laughs> I'm, putting I'm putting on my crown, girl. Yes. Can you imagine if we all looked at each other like kings and queens and how different that we would treat each other if we looked at each other in that way. Well, I can tell you, I do my best to do that. And it has helped me a ton to be less judgmental and critical of others. And especially to myself. I mean, it really has impacted my life to, to be more kind to myself and to others. And like that catty bitchiness, I, it, it makes me feel ugly, you know, cause we all do it but it makes me feel real ugly when it spills out of my mouth. Like I, I could see it coming out and it's just this nasty poop color and it, it's, it's like diarrhea and it's really toxic and it smells nasty. And that's what it feels like. So I really, because I don't like that, I really try to catch myself from even starting in my thoughts. And when I hear it spoof from other people's mouths, it really makes me feel really yucky. And I usually speak up or say something or let them finish. And I'm thinking, oh, I hope that's it. You know? So yeah, I, I, you're right. We do need to be, do better for ourselves and for each other. Let's, let's be better. That's all I got to say. Yeah. I, that's a great thing to leave on. We can talk on and on about it. Yeah, I know. This. We'll definitely do another, we'll do a part two for sure. <laughs> part two for sure. <laughs> yeah. January, was any last words? Yeah, there was one thing and I'm trying to find it right now because I saw it. 
I saw it on Instagram and it was talking about how, let me see if I could find it. Um, I, oh, you know, I, I lost my, my train of thought about what it was, but it's it was, okay. basically saying, it was basically saying that, um, you know, we, we need to, or by accepting yourself and accepting, you know, where we're at. And I think I already said this, but, but it really does boil down to, you know, what you were saying earlier too, is that, um, we got to just accept it and, and be okay with wherever we're at, you know, and be, be like grounded in that like that is key you know um but yeah there's so much more that we can share but I yes. love, <laughs> love the topic. So part two to be continued yes January where can everybody find you you can find me on Facebook Instagram uh VIP finance builders I'm on LinkedIn January Liddell um what I do I am actually a retirement specialist financial strategist um so I help you create tax free retirement accounts um and I help you roll over and protect your money um so that you know it won't be subject to the stock market crash or whatever that's going on right <laughs> now so that is what I do so you can find me on VIP finance builders Facebook and Instagram. Yes, yes. And you can find me, Helen Edwards, at Hell of a Journey on Instagram, Hell of a Journey One on TikTok, and Sexy Freedom Media on our Facebook page. Uh, also, join us for Confident and Courageous Me, a four week intensive program uh, that's going to be a group online plus coaching available 75% off. Oh my God, you definitely want to join us. We're going to talk about everything we just talked about today, give you tools, um, provide you with a mastermind group, action plans, and get you really towards your goals this uh, for 2023. So it starts in January. I'll put the link below, sign up, and please share if you felt that this has touched you in any way or inspired you. You can also buy us a coffee and support our podcast that way. So thank you, everybody. Ahie, muchas gracias. Thank you. Maraming salamat and aloha. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Want to hear more? Duh. Visit us at sexyfreedommedia.com.